Hello and welcome to this video about knowledge of investment as long-term planning. When you're investing, you want to be strategic. So there are lots of different situations in which you would probably want to avoid securities like stocks and bonds where you could lose some or all of your money. And you may have already experienced that in the game we're playing. Now, here's some examples of when you might want to avoid those things. If you need liquidity, so if you need to be able to access this money very quickly and know that it's going to be the amount of money that you put in there to start with, that's when you want a savings account or something like that. Uh, an FDIC insured account that doesn't lose money. If you can't afford to lose the money that you're putting in there for investing because you need it, say, to live on, then you shouldn't be investing in stocks and bonds because you could lose all of that. If you're retired and you need to have a lower risk set of investments because your investments won't have time to recover, then you shouldn't be putting your money in stocks and bonds, at least not as much. And if you just prefer to avoid risk, if you think your better strategy is that you would not like to take on a lot of risk, then the corporate stocks and bonds are not your choice. Here's what you want to do, though. You always want to research specific stocks, bonds, or mutual funds before you purchase. You want to understand what's going on in the wider economy and how all those factors will affect uh, the value of the stocks that you put your money into. And you also want to consider your financial priorities because depending on what stage of life you're in, you're going to have different needs. If you're going to school, a lot of your money just needs to be going to you know, pay your bills and pay down your debts. If you're single versus married, you'll have different interests. If you have children, you want to make sure uh, that you're putting money away for different things than if you're already retired and your children are already grown. So you just want to think about what is your stage of life and what financial needs do you have. You also want to make sure that you're very clear on what are the circumstances where you can actually buy or sell your investments. So would you be easily able to sell the stuff off that you're investing in in order to do something else with it. Then once you've made all of those decisions and considerations, you want to build yourself or portfolio or work through a mutual fund to sort of use their portfolio. Um, here are some specific strategies for investing, and this is connected to what's in your learning check for today. Um, one of the most simple is if you're investing, buy at a low price, sell at a high price. It's very simple. But dollar cost averaging is a little bit of complexity you can add to that um, that makes your life a little better. So dollar cost averaging, this is when you invest a certain amount of money consistently into stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. So if the price of it has gone pretty low, then you actually, your dollars will go farther. You'll get more shares of stock per dollar. Um, but if the stock price then has gone high, you'll only buy a couple of things. So it ends up where you will buy low and then later on be able to sell high because if the price is higher, then you aren't buying as much of it. If the price is lower, then you're buying more of it. It's kind of a beautiful way of making sure that you uh, consistently both are a little diversified and buy low and sell high. Speaking of diversification, that's the last one. That's, in fact, one of the main strategies is to make sure that you're not putting all of your eggs in one basket. Here's a key warning for you, though. As you go through this process and you begin investing over the long term, you don't want to treat your stockbroker like a financial planner. Um, they don't have to act with your best interests in heart because they are trying to make money for themselves. If you'd like to be a stockbroker when you grow up or when you exit high school and go through college, then it is certainly a good way to make money. As you're heading towards your retirement age, when you finally no longer have to work and you can just live off the money that you have made, there are a couple of different account options to get you there. And here are the main ones we're going to address. We're going to talk about individual retirement accounts, which are shortened to IRAs, 401ks and 403bs. Those are not like shortened for anything. Those are the sections of tax law that they exist in. And for each of those options, the IRA, the 401k and the 403b, there are also Roth versions, which affect how you will pay taxes. Because one of the key things is over the long term, taxes can significantly impact the amount of money that you save and what you have in there that can grow. And so we'll talk about uh, how your choices here will be impacted by taxes and interest rates and all that stuff. Because everyone needs to save for retirement, there's all these different retirement account options. A 401k is a employee benefit. And in fact, companies offer them to attract uh, valuable employees to their business. Here's why employees see them as valuable. Companies used to offer these things called pensions, where if you put money towards that pension account as you were working there and you retired from this company, 
uh, then you would get to be paid a certain part of your salary for the entirety of your retirement. But companies have moved away from them as they have turned out to be expensive and potentially treacherous. Uh, so workers are no longer protected by things like pensions, which means that 401ks are this more independent way of managing your own money for retirement. What it is, is it is a savings slash investment account where you put in some of your paycheck before taxes even come out of your paycheck and your company matches up to a certain amount, which is brilliant. So you're basically getting free money for putting money away for retirement. A 403b is basically the same thing as a 401k, except that 403bs are things offered by employers that are public entities like governments or public school systems, uh, as opposed to private companies. And so all the information that you heard about 401ks and we're about to talk about um, applies to both 401ks and 403bs. Here are the benefits. All the contributions, that's the term for the money you put into uh, a 401k account, and that can come from you or from your employer, um, they go in tax-free because the money is taken out of your paycheck and it's called tax deferred. This means that you actually look like you have less income each year to be taxed on, even though that money is still technically yours. Um, and because many employers match your contribution, that's another benefit. So it looks like you're making less money for tax purposes, but you're still making the same amount. And in fact, more if your employer matches the amount that you put in there. For 401ks and 403bs, then you do still have to pay taxes, but you pay them when you take that money out in retirement. And the money that you put in each year reduces your taxable income, and that means that you count it as income when you are retired, which is a tricky way of getting around some tax things. So Roth 401ks and Roth 403bs. Roth here almost means opposite tax, because instead of getting your money taxed when you take it out in retirement, you tax it before it goes in. And that way you don't have to pay any taxes on it in retirement. Here's a key question that uh, comes up with 401ks and 403bs. The question is, can you keep them? Let's say you leave the company. Do you still get that money that you put in there? Or have you just, you know, bet all of your money on staying with that company forever? No, because you can actually roll over the money from your 401k at one company into a new account of the same kind at your new job. Well, but what if they don't offer one? Well, then you can roll it over into an IRA or Roth IRA. So a traditional individual retirement account or IRA is a thing you could have even if you don't have it through a company uh, because it is invested for you and managed by a company. It does earn uh, interest and it grows over time just like a 401k does, uh, but it does have some limitations. So first of all, it, you can only invest up to $5,000 a year in an IRA. What's nice about this is that it reduces your tax liability, meaning that if you make like $50,000 and you decide to actually put all $5,000 into the IRA, for tax purposes, you look like you only made $45,000 and you only have to pay money for taxes on that $45,000 amount. Roth IRAs are interesting because you invest after tax dollars into the account. And so you don't get that tax break at the start, but then you don't have to pay taxes when it comes out when you are in retirement. And you can open IRA accounts at banks or investment firms that will set you up with a stockbroker or financial advisor who's going to help you manage the account. But this is a key thing about 401ks, IRAs, all these retirement accounts. You get all of these benefits and it seems like such a good deal, but here's the downsides. Uh, there's a 10% penalty for early withdrawal, which is a very, very high uh, chunk that's going to get taken out of your money. Because in terms of tax law, the government wants to give people a reason to save for retirement, because if you don't, then people are old and without money, and then they end up being the responsibility of the government and society to take care of. So you want to give people reasons to help their future selves. But you also want to give them reasons to do things that are other important investments in themselves. For example, educational expenses. You can take money out of an IRA to pay for education expenses or for purchasing your first home, which is another kind of good investment as seen through our lens of government and a couple other select items. So you just want to be very careful about what you're taking money out for and documenting what you're taking the money out for. But which should you choose, Roth versus traditional? If you're going to have an individual retirement account, if you think you're earning more money now than you'll earn or take out each year in retirement, then the traditional makes the most sense because you'll pay less taxes in the future when you're older and taking money out of your retirement account. 
So if you're working on a really good job right now that gives you a lot of money, you're probably not going to get all that amount of money when you're in retirement. So you probably want to go with the traditional so you avoid your high taxes now and then in the future uh, you will be able to pay the lower amount of taxes. But if you're at a lower paying job right now and you actually think that over time you'll get better and better jobs and then when you're in retirement you're going to be earning a lot of money, um, then you may actually want to do a Roth IRA because right now you'll pay these low taxes on your relatively low income. And then when you're older and you are retired and you're taking that money out, you actually look like you have a higher income. And that means that you want to avoid those future higher taxes. So the Roth IRA makes the most sense. Here's a chart right here that compares Roth IRAs, traditional 401ks, Roth 401ks, and 403bs. And I'll draw your attention to a couple of these things. You can pause the video to take a look at this more in depth or look at the notes online. But take a look at this junk right here. Here is the limits of the amount that you can put in. This is from a 2012 listing. Uh, here's the tax information. Notice the Roth is always after tax and the traditional is always pre-tax. And notice down here when you can start taking the money out without a penalty. So it's an age-based thing. And there are limitations on where you can get them. So check out that chart. Here's the strategy for retirement. As you get closer to retirement, you want to make sure that you have things in place to make sure you'll have enough to live on. So here's what you want to consider. First, cost of living. If you live in New York City versus if you live in Richmond, Virginia, you will have very different cost of living needs. In fact, it's very, very much significantly higher. So some people even move in their retirement to places that are cheaper to live in so that their money will go farther. That can make a lot of sense. You also want to consider how much do you want to be able to spend on your wants? Because in retirement, you don't have to you know, retreat to a tiny, tiny room in a cell and eat only bread and drink only water. You probably want to continue to live your life. That's kind of the point of retirement. Uh, so you want to consider how much is that actually going to cost you. And you want to consider how much you already have saved up. As you get closer to retirement, this is an important strategy you want to follow. You'll want to switch to safer, more liquid savings and investments over time. Liquid meaning that it's easy, quick, and cheap to get your money out because stock market investments and in general riskier investments can pay off in the long term if you're willing to hold off and wait until it goes back up. But say you're old and you are almost 60 and you're going to retire soon and the stock market crashes and it just tanks and you lose a huge amount of money. If you were a younger person and you had time to wait, that might all come back over time. In fact, historically that is what happens. But you might not live long enough to see them recover. So you're also more likely to require a significant amount of money quickly, say to cover medical expenses. So you want to have a liquid set of accounts that you can pull that money out of. And you also want to have your money and income be more predictable so that you're not having to live month to month on whether the stock market has gone up or down. And you don't want your finances to be that dependent on how the economy is doing. So you want to have a more liquid savings and investments system and generally safer so that you don't have to live under constant stress in your retirement because that's not the point of retirement. And that's it. That's all the strategies for this video that you're going to learn about in terms of long-term planning.